playing great defense. And we had a difficult time, uh, very similar to the Kentucky game, of getting good offense. We had good ball movement, good player movement. We just could not knock down shots. And sometimes it's very simplistic. There's four ways to beat a zone. is ball movement, player movement. And not until the second half did we get what really hurts a zone, and that's paint touches. Drives into the paint. It creates offensive rebounds. It creates other good things. We did it in the second half. In the first half, although the shots were open, uh, we're not Gonzaga, and we're, and we're not some of these great shooting teams. So we've got to get paint touches in zone offense. But give them a lot of credit. They did a lot of good things to hurt us tonight. Easy shot. You step into it. So we got to work on that, continue to work, because, you know, Duke is a team that never plays zone, and they played us tonight. And that's what I would have done if I was in his shoes. Chris picked up his second foul in the first half. How much did that affect you guys? Maybe not just for the it affected us, but what did I tell you the other day? You, you need three great guards to have a great backcourt because that happens in a game. The problem is he lost the ball, got emotionally upset, and tried to steal it back and fouled. That's the mistake. Can't do that. Got to be a senior, and you got to say, that's okay. I lost the ball. Not a big deal. Not embarrassment. Not a big deal. Coach, did you see improvement in Duke's perimeter defense from the team that you watched their past two games? I know you had a lot, there were a lot of open shots. Yes, I well, I, I, if you watch Duke and watch what was going on, you know why they got beat. They got beat with high pick and rolls, but they were playing zone. So you obviously see that. You know, Zone is a smart move because it takes away from Okafor having to come out and play. Even at the end of the shot clock when it's under 10 seconds, if you drop back and play zone, that's all Miami ran the entire game. So, you know, it's a, if we can get, if we can get Nanu to play just a glimpse of what he was doing tonight at the defensive end as well as the offensive end, uh, a lot of our problems will be cured, but that's easier said than done. He's, he's got to learn to how to work hard all the time, every minute he's out there. How much did you practice against zone offense? We practice zone offense every, every game, every day. Did we expect them to play zone? Well, they never did. But I told our guys, I thought they'd play it at the end of the shot clock to take Okafor because two years ago we really hurt him with the pick and roll. We thought they would somehow take the pick and roll away either by sagging or playing some sort of zone. With as many great comebacks as you had, did you ever feel like there was a, there was a run coming? I think we had a run, but I think it was their night and it wasn't ours. You know what happens with young people today? When you don't make shots... It affects every part of your game mentally. It certainly affected Chris Jones. He's been playing tremendous ball, and you could just see it. The shot didn't fall, and it bothers him. And we got to get to the point where every game could be a Wichita State. I mean, we're going to fight hard this year to get a good seed. We've got to fight hard because of this league, because we are offensively challenged. I knew that from day one. I said it all along. We're not as good as the past three years for one reason. What you saw against Kentucky and what you saw tonight. We can't knock down easy shots inside as well as outside. So we got to really, really be meticulous in every other area. Okafor was just dominating us inside. We couldn't get to him in time. Um, and that's a problem with him. He's awfully good. We worked on when he steps 10 feet away from the basket of cutting him off to the baseline and getting help from the top. And we gave baseline two times. You, th you think we need that? Then, then, then he should post up more. Post up more and get the ball. But, you know, I, I thought Montrez played very well tonight. Um, I think that what he's got to understand is they're going to come after him. Um, and, but I thought he played well tonight. Um, we didn't get a good performance out of too many people, but he played well. Mango played 26 minutes tonight. Tonawaku's uh, 14. What did you see from Mango? That Mango just gives you 100%. He's the number one guy. He goes F, he's 34 in the country in terms of percentage of offensive rebounds. We don't have another guy in the top 150. So he goes after the ball. He gives you 100%. Is he limited? Yes, he's limited. Um, but we just got to get Nanu to play. Uh, did he have a defensive rebound tonight? No. So, you know, we got to get him playing all the time and playing hard. Playing hard sometimes for young kids is, is an acquired skill. And, and, in practice as well as game. just got to, if we do that, it's going to cure a lot of our problems. One more, Coach. I just want to give credit to Duke. They, they played an excellent game. 
Uh, they took away our strengths, and uh, they're, they're a very good team coming off two losses. As I said, we're going to have a lot of bumps in the road this year. A lot of them, not, not just a few. We have a lot of bumps. But I, I think come March, uh, we'll be a much better. All these zones that we're seeing right now, I think will be a much better basketball team when we just don't rely on the jump shot. Now, after, after you've created all those things, ball movement, player movement, and paint touches, and you miss the shot, you got to live with it. But, but the one thing you don't want to do is come down and make two passes and shoot it because then you're shooting yourself in the foot. Thank you.